Welcome back to What's It Wednesday. This is episode number 13. Last week's guest right here was indeed an osprey, like many of you guessed. The first person to get that right was Odie, and actually you were the first person to comment, so that's that was pretty cool. That's never happened before. We never had the first commenter also be the first person to get it right, so good work. Good work, my friend. The dead giveaway for most people was were the talons here, especially the rough texture get that in focus, especially the rough texture on the feet, on the bottoms of the feet. Osprey hunt fish, and because of that they have extremely textured feet. If you compare that to a red-tailed hawk, it's pretty much just smooth. And the other cool thing about the osprey is that this toe right here is movable. It can go to the back. Um, actually, sorry. Yeah. It's this toe that moves. It can move backwards. Not in this dried specimen, but that allows them to really really get a, a really solid grip on a fish, no matter how it's wiggling, no matter what happens to be going on. So these are excellent, excellent hunters. Osprey. It's one of my favorite birds of prey. They're super pretty. Unfortunately, they don't do well in captivity. And the reason for that is that hunting is part of their ritual for eating, grabbing those fish out of the water. And they really don't want to eat pre-killed food or even food that's still alive, but they don't dive down to hunt it. I assume that they've developed kind of a, a phobia of food that they did not kill themselves because, I don't know, maybe fish go bad so, so quickly that they evolved this habit to only eat what they kill themselves. But sadly, that means that they don't do well in captivity. It's really rare when we're rehabilitating injured osprey. We have to force feed them, and it's, it's super stressful for them. But uh, we only do it for a couple of weeks while they're recovering. Then we, then we set them free again. So yeah, osprey, amazing animals. This week's guest is absolutely fascinating because of these sclerotic bones in the eye. Most of the birds that I've showed you so far were missing these bones. They're... You know, they're fairly delicate. All birds have them, so far as I know. And actually, almost all vertebrates have them. The only group of vertebrates that don't have them consistently are mammals, and I think crocodiles have lost them as well, but don't quote me on that. But the sclerotic ring allows the eyes of these different animals to be weird-shaped. They don't have to be round. Notice that in this bird... The eyes are, they're really big in the back, like inside the skull cavity here. The, the eyes are huge in the back, so the retina uh, can be huge on these animals. But these bones act kind of like a, kind of like a belt. They're actually embedded in the flesh of the eye, the white part of the eye. And then the eye bulges out the end here, just like that. And in the case of this animal, it can't really move its eyes. Its eyes are too big. But in some other birds, they can move their eyes still. It's not like these bones are fused with the skull. They are independent of the skull. I mean, in, in this case, they're glued in afterwards. But so yeah, those are these sclerotic rings. There's a really cool website. I've got a link to it in the video description where you can learn about those rings and learn about the anatomy of bird eyes. They're really amazing. You know, in our eyes, we have these blood vessels that run across the retina and they, you know, supply blood <laughs> to the retina. Well, in birds, they have a structure called the pectin instead. They don't have blood vessels. They have this little chunk of flesh that sticks out into the eye, and it's covered in blood vessels. And it uses the, the juice inside the eye as a medium to transport things from the blood to the cells inside the eye, inside the retina. So it's, it's a really, that's, that's why birds have such better eyesight when compared to mammals. It's one of the reasons that they have such better eyesight than us. Now, a lot of you are like probably thinking right now, hey, show us the talons to that animal. I want to see what its feet look like because that was such a help with the osprey. Well, it just so happens that, okay, fine. I will show you the talons. Here they are. <laughs> look at this creature. I really like this specimen because it looks like it has fur, but that is not fur. Those are feathers, and I don't know that I'll be able to even get here. I have tried my best to isolate a single feather for you to prove that this is feathers and not fur. You can see it; it's this fan-like structure. But those feathers going all the way down the feet uh, help it stay warm. When 
that's hunting. So these are its talons. This is its skull. What do you think it is? What's it Wednesday? Pretty dang cool. Look at underneath here. Such a bizarre animal. No Googling, as usual. Can't wait to see your comments in the comments section. Yeah, I don't know. Very proud of that. Whoa. <laughs> His tongue's like sandpaper. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's funny. All the cows. Cute. You're cute. I don't have any more. I'm all out of grass. Oh no. Can I give you scratches? Beep. Bloop. It's so funny that cows don't have upper teeth, upper incisors. Mm -hmm. How'd you lose your teeth, huh? What sort of evolutionary silliness is that? <laughs>